got shut out. And they shut out on too. So if I told them about it, they They got mad because Rich got mad and my son Henry. Is that how easy that was? He had a big stink. He went to corporate. The corporate went down to his district uh, executive, which takes care of the I've been on the phone with they kicked Henry out. New York, the people in New York, and we are working on getting a Drupal, um, it's like a, well we have a, a project that we're working on with all the other occupies around the country, and we're all going to try to standardize our software for Drupal, and build our platform up, and build kind of like an occupier's Drupal platform, so that's been kind of cool to get involved with, and I've actually learned quite a bit. Just from uh, just talking to this guy on the phone for about an hour. So that's pretty cool. And what's also cool is I've been working on writing coding some, uh, some live stream software that's not proprietary like Ustream, so we don't have to deal with commercials. And then we can host all the videos on our own server, which is much preferable. Right? That way we can control over our files. Which Ustream is pretty cool about that, but it's still not, you know, I'd rather see our. The occupies control their own information. Yeah, the one right there, yeah. Yeah, they have a really good wiki set up. And actually, there's a lot of stuff I can do to control people. So, it's exciting. Hi, this is Clark. Uh, <coughs> uh, we'll be ready to start. Uh, we'll be able to start General's General Assembly here in a little bit. Excuse me. Uh, we're down here at 101 California, and we're getting ready to start General Assembly, I guess, in about 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, just hang with us, and uh, we should be meeting real soon. Thank you. 
Welcome to uh, 101 California. Uh, we're going to uh, have General Assembly tonight. Uh, we should have it within a half an hour or less. Uh, this is Clark, uh, your live stream here. Uh, we're hoping you enjoy the view down here at 101 California. And if you'd like to chat with me, or if you have any questions for General Assembly, or anything that you would like to bring up at General Assembly, uh, you can go to my ustream.tv slash channel slash occupy san francisco all one word and uh log on and then you can chat with me there on the social stream because that's what shows up on my phone when i'm live streaming so uh feel free to contact me with any questions or concerns that you have and i'll do my utmost to make sure that um, i tell the folks down here at 101 california uh, so uh, just be a little patient with us and uh, we'll be uh, having General Assembly real soon. Thanks. Actually, live streaming is the part that I enjoy the most about. The whole Occupy does it. Right? It's, a very, uh, it's a very Buddhist thing because uh, you're always in the now. Right, and like when you look at it after it's been recorded, it totally loses its whole like function. Well, no, it's gonna have the it's gonna have it like a, an archive, but it loses its it loses its right because when you're watching a live stream, it's a real immediate thing. And what I really enjoy about it is that it allows you to chat with the people that are watching, and you almost feel like you know those people. It really, it really does a really good job of conveying that, and it's been really useful for me in organizing because now I know people all around the country because I'm always monitoring live streams, and I'm, I, you know, I'm not shy, and I'm, I'm always chat with people, ask them questions, what are you doing, you know, and some live streamers are better than others. It depends. A lot of it depends too on how many people that are watching, but generally they always get right back to you. And the other night there was a guy occupied air, and he was down at. Uh, the steps of Freedom Hall, or Freedom, uh, they call it the Freedom Building, I think is what it's called. But it's right across the street from Wall Street, where they're allowed to stay all night. Yeah, it was just kind of fun. I felt like I was hanging out there on the steps with them. And we were just chatting, and, you know. So that really brings people closer 
to the thing, and I think it's our best advertisement, you know, to get people to excited about what's going on. You know, I really couldn't tell you. It's kind of a haphazard thing lately, but uh, stick around. I think he got kind of tired of it. He got a ticket one day. Yeah, I knew it was a good $250, $300 ticket. At least. Those cops were like, you know, he was really intense with this cop, right? I think he'd been watching. And I, I don't know if you know, but, uh, it's a real nice guy that does this. You know, kind of a middle-aged guy with glasses. Yeah, and, uh, a real nice guy. You know, I felt bad. If he wanted to, chances he could take it to court and fight it. Chances are he win, but his cops usually don't show up. Although I got a funny feeling that if it had something to do with Occupy, they would they would make double special sure that they would have two cops there instead of one. Yeah, they weren't too bad. Uh, they weren't too bad at the Wells Fargo, but there was like all the. All the contested like space that we were trying to trying to contest was all inside. So you know they they weren't they, they didn't get around beating people up on the outside like they usually do. Because I hung out for quite a while just to see if they were going to try to make a move on people, which is something they like to do. And no, they didn't. And uh, so that was that was good. And I don't think they wanted to attack us because you know we had a lot of different groups there. They kind of hold back. You know, when it's just us, they go the extra mile, right? But when we have other groups with us, then they kind of kind of back off a little bit, right? So which I missed the police meeting this month. But uh, better I'll be at next month. <laughs> I've been fighting the police for many, many years. You know. So I know who they all are. I know, you know, I know which guy is which. I know what his job is, right? And I want them to know who the fuck I am too, right? You know, because I have my connections on the police commission as well. You know, and uh, you know they used to go hard after medical marijuana people, like right around 90, from 97 up until 2000. Like he went hard after that. Like I'm not saying it was just me, but I went to all those fucking city hall hearings and all that other crap, and I was finally able to like discover which cops like we could get information from, and then we kind of that didn't lie to you, and then which cops were liars. Unfortunately, one cop who was a real Judas, uh, I didn't get quite to get the beat on him, but we knew something was up with this dude because he was asking too many questions, right? And he wanted to come over to our house and all this other shit. Right, and uh, normally I'm, you know, the cops. Yeah, you come over. I don't give a shit. Right, but this cop, we decided not to let him in because we just felt something was up with this guy. And then it turned out he was actually we had a meeting where we invited the police to talk about medical marijuana rights, and he was assigned to the duty along with the lieutenant, who was the guy who I liked, and he was there just to get information and turn it over to the DEA. Right, so we didn't give him too much information, but still. One lady took the cops at their word. Yeah. It was a long and convoluted story, which he ended up having to do three years in the federal penitentiary or shit, right? And because of this cop. And I ran into him the other day. Um, his name is Martin Halloran, uh, badge number 772. And uh, so whenever I see him, I give him a bunch of shit. I mean, I'm this close to fucking getting into a fight with him. And I don't fucking back down for this creep. I put my friend in jail for three years. I'm never going to let that go. Right, and he's just walking around like, like life's just hunky dory, you know. And, and you know, look, motherfucker, you know, he's like, well, we got our live stream on. I better shut up. I might say something incriminating, but let's just put it this way: if I was not into non-violence and stuff, he would be in some serious shit. <laughs> but we're not into that. Yeah, yeah. Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah, Rich, I do him. I wear I do a little work web work for him. And uh, Yeah, he's pretty together, dude, you know. I mean he's not he's, I mean, you know, they're making pretty good money. Well they're making good money over there. Yeah, well what they do is they tell you 
they take all your assets and seize all your assets, and there's really nothing you can do about it. And if you go to court to try to reclaim your assets, that's when they prosecute you uh, criminally. So they, it's, uh, there's a Latin term for it, but in English it's called theft under color of law. So that's what the that's what the DEA does, right? And I've been trying to get uh, medical marijuana people. That's another reason. That's kind of why I, I decided to step it up with Occupy. Is that medical marijuana people? Uh, you know, I told them I said all we got to do is go into the federal building and occupy DEA offices and not leave, right? And then once we're there, and then when they arrest us, we don't leave. Right? And you just stay there and it's become their problem. And don't eat and refuse food. And but I can only find one other person that was just as good as I do with the idea. You know, it's like marijuana people, they get arrested every day. But when it comes to actually making, doing an arrest and actually mean something, well, then they're, you know, they're scared, right? And uh, so that kind of, that's kind of like soured me on the movement, too, because there's a poor group of committed people, but the chiefs never want to take the, like, your chief, you know, they won't get arrested or do anything like that, right? Because they have their little money-making pipedoms that they're operating to make money, right? And uh, they want to protect that instead of being real activists. You know, I mean, I'm not going to put down their uh, their efforts because we need all the people that we can get. But at the same time, I question the motivation of a lot of them. You know, and uh, I can honestly say that when I was you know, into my activism with, with Head Evolution and, and Lamps Legal American Marijuana Pages and Americans for Safe Access, that I never sold any marijuana or. Did any, never did any dealing or what anything while I was an activist. Right? So that way, cops, other people, outside groups, could never accuse me of profiteering off the movement. And uh, now that I'm out of it, you know, I'm kind of, kind of at liberty to do whatever the hell I want. Right? But when I was a part of that, I made sure that, you know, it's kind of like when somebody gets elected to public office. Right? They're not supposed to. You're supposed to divest of all their stock and all this other stuff, right? Same thing, right? Same thing. So, because I never wanted to see people. And I was really, really was fucked up for a while there because I didn't have any money and I didn't have any pot. And my friends used to give me a hard time about it. Like, yeah, you're the only, you're the only webmaster of the marijuana site that doesn't have any marijuana, right? That oh, pissed me off for a while there. And then, uh... But then, you know, there was people that, you know, you know cared and, you know, made sure I didn't run out of medicine. Yeah. I mean, I can live without it, you know, and I have and stuff, but um, it sticks my life. So the quality of my life really goes up. You know, not just physically, but mentally. You know, I'm a lot easier, nicer person. You know, you know a lot nicer person. <laughs> Right, I'm, I'm kind of hard with people, you know, I don't put up with a lot of bullshit, right, and, uh, and, uh, marijuana helps me a little more diplomatic, that's why being a webmaster is a good challenge, because now I really gotta watch what they say, being a radical has never been really my priority, but, but now it is. Water with you guys. I'm down at Occupy right now, man. You should come down. Everybody, this is Clark, and uh, we're down here in 101, California. Thanks, Tyler Sarah, one of our original occupiers, and we're uh, down here, and we're waiting for General Assembly to get started. <coughs> we'll bring that to you in its entirety. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Raymond Sullivan. 
and I tweet all the time, every day, and a lot of it's information about Occupy, and then a lot of it's information about a lot of other things, so you can follow me there. And uh, this is mirrored on OccupySF.org, so you can check out our homepage. Uh, if you want to chat, though, you're going to have to go to my Ustream channel, which is Ustream.tv slash channel slash Occupy San Francisco. Anyway, uh, I'm going to let the uh, live stream go on as we're preparing for General Assembly. So we'll be right back. Thanks for the water. Funny how the temperatures drop like five degrees. I'm glad I wore it. That I'm glad of. Monday, Tuesday. <coughs> hey, how you doing, Dave? Good, how you doing? Not bad. Did I shoot in the world? Yeah, it's... Do you ever worry they're going to stop history and just do a cycle of endless live streams? Or just watch the of their lives? <coughs> well, yeah, well, that's what our life is. Okay, how are you? Live stream. You have to be in the moment. Okay. The eternal now, right? That's live stream. It's always now. Let's see him. How's your day, Clark? Pretty good, pretty good. We had a... I didn't make it up to Geithner. You coughed and you sick? Okay. Uh, uh, we didn't make it up to Geithner today, but there was people at Dish. A couple of Carlos and uh, Susan had tickets. Yeah, so uh, that was good. Yeah, one person, uh, Nancy Macias. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, she got in and she was able to interrupt him while he was speaking. Okay. So naturally he kind of brushed it off because that who cares. You know, at least somebody did it. And uh, what else? Uh, my collaborative event today is one of our uh, people that we work with. She's, today was her last day. So it was and then uh, spent the rest of the time getting the live stream, getting her ready. Yeah, your fancy new equipment. Uh, yeah. Well, my lawyer bought me. Yeah, uh, well, it's against the Empire. Really? Gift. Yeah. And, uh, for all services rendered. So, got me live streaming, you know, and everything. I don't have a producer today, so I had to uh, post it on the website and put it down here and they get the stream going. So got, uh, if I had my producer, I would have waited to get started. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, if you want to talk about that, we'll get you, you know, we'll get you a little more situated. Um, I'll get you, you can talk about that on our live stream. <laughs> bridge coalition still thinking about what they're doing about the bridge. Yeah, that's what I was wondering too. Sarah, she's a she's a proponent of not going over the bridge, and I'm kind of, I mean, it's okay to go onto the bridge, but not block traffic, I feel. I told you, I passed on what you said to the folks that Occupy SF was split on block, not on supporting the workers, but on blocking traffic. That's the only issue, really, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think, I think they're not going to do that. I think they're going to do other. Yeah, there's going to be something. That was what I encourage them to do. Other. This feels like a little bit of a setup. <laughs> you know what makes me crazy? Right. It's a dual like drive. Medial lane, 
say, oh, they're disrupting people, it's those crazy occupied people or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I don't no, know. Put on the hook we agreed to support the bridge workers if they shut down the bridge. That's the one thing. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, adding to all the craziness of the whole situation. Well, the unions might go out, though, so that's, that's probably going to go announce and they figure it out. But I think three of them have strike sanctions, which means that they could go on strike, and I think the Inland Bolton's Union, which runs the ferries well, so I think it'll be a ferry day and they'll call for tickets. I like that dynamic. It's like, if you work someplace and you put down your tools, it's like because you want health care. That's reasonable, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember, the rural drive is still going to be really fucked up. The what? Because the rural drive is closed this weekend, right? What is it? They're tearing it all down, right? They've got like the whole the whole weekend to tear it down. And Monday, there's a good chance it's not going to be open yet. So Tuesday is going to be the first day of all the new traffic configurations getting on the bridge. So theoretically, we're not even going to have to block traffic. It's going to be a, it's going to be a mess. So, so the anyway. bridge workers said they had a yeah. interagency. So like one red law line. enforcement meeting between state and six county officials to talk about what we're going to do on May Day. Their concerns. Yeah, well, one red light, like well placed on 19th Avenue, lasts a little bit too long, like maybe five minutes. It'll be more than enough to snuggle all the whole thing. Right? Because it's supposed to, you know, you guys are like, we're, we're like. Where During you the war, the JHP people. walked the bridge because people were on the on the They don't walk. commute, right? So, you know, we're not commuters every day, but most commuters, like, they'll tell you the weak point of their commute, right? And all it takes is just one little thing on that on that commute. It's like, I know I used to live over in Berkeley, no, uh, right? Occupy Oakland that came over there. They have, they've been putting out, calling it blocking the flow of capital. I find it's the objection well, because that's kind of what bosses call us is like we're, we're basically a human resource we're not a person and so to call the people across the bridge even though okay Oakland's poor but sorry most of those folks are working people uh, it's kind of what the bosses do yeah it's like they're not capital they're people and our goal is to have them not be capital but to be people right uh, yeah, that was something we might want to look into, uh, right? The sabotage or group. We never talk about that very much. Did you ever put any of our poets on live stream? What's that? Did you ever put her and any of the other occupied poets on live stream? No, no, no. Did you do that? Did you do like? Oh yeah, tomorrow's poems under the dome. Oh. I'll be out there. I'll be live streaming that too. That's at uh, City Hall. Yeah, it's really cool. They have all that collection. Anybody can sign up. Get signed in. And that goes over that, about three hours. That, uh, Occupy SF Poetry Anthology that Virginia put together. Are you in that? Yeah. Okay. So and they're doing a reading, like, uh... I'll keep forgetting that's yeah. where I met Sarah at. Right? They did it in Monday this week. Yeah, yeah. I know. Maybe that, that was it. Yeah, yeah. But, she's great. Yeah. That's, where I, that's where I met Sarah at the Poetry Center. Oh, okay. Yeah. She's yeah. yeah. good friends with my great friend Arvita. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the party for Arvita's is tonight. Right? After the... Also, you know, so you drop by. I don't think there's any password or anything. Well, she's got a really cool place. Like, if you ever been over to her house, it's like, she's an artist, right? And a decorator. And her path is like being a national. Like, it's really, it's cool. It's like, like that's why I started to be a friend. Yeah, she's got a stage. You walk into her place and there's a stage and a big room. Yeah. They call the place. Artwork every inch of the place. Yeah. Museum of Living Art. All yeah. the world's a stage and so is my bedroom. Yeah. Is that it? How was your day? Oh, are you a, that's all right. Are you a working person? I am, yeah. Five days? Five days, yeah. Can I ask what you do? Yeah, I, um, I'm an e-learning project manager for uh, the American Academy of Ophthalmology, so I help manage a website for doctors. Say what, pardon me, say what ophthalmology is. Uh, eye doctors. Oh, okay, got it. Work on like glaucoma and cataracts and stuff. Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. Sound good? Yeah, a little hint on those, uh, on those budget cables. 
Uh-huh. But if you run them in line with the tire, then they don't move. Uh-huh. Right? Like you run two straps, one plus last year, one day. But uh, that'll keep your stuff from moving from side to side. Like, I miss riding the bicycle. Can I tell you something cool? There's uh, these silk screen artists, and on May Day they're going to do silk screens on people's t-shirts. So I'm, I'm just adding to the May Day announcement for everyone to bring a t-shirt, some kind of a shirt. I love that. Yeah. I like the pie yeah. that everybody got. The only problem with it is they should have a little slice when it comes out of it, so you know that it looks like a pie. Right? It's kind of hard to tell it's a pie. That's the image they're going to do on people's shirts. Eric, you're from New York. I keep it in the paper. I look at it on my paper. <laughs> Uh, I'm out of the paper thing now. You know? There's a bunch of lumberjacks kids who are going to be unemployed with you. <laughs> well, no, they get jobs. And then the rest of the species right. will survive because there'll be that climate left. Come over to my web sweatshop. Right? I'll pay you three dollars an hour to uh, put up link farms. Which they do in India, you know. They actually pay people to come onto sites like ours yeah. to post link farms, right? And, uh, they can pay them like a dollar an hour. So if it gets taken down, it doesn't really matter because economically it makes more sense for them because they're getting more hits, you know, and they can charge more for impressions. Right. It's like we're getting ready to start. We have a facilitator. Hi, sir. We have a facilitator. Where are you from? Uh, Ukraine. Uh, well, I live in here now, but that's my people came from there.